I'm going to prepare an experiment to simulate a geochemical survey. What you will need is a tray, just a takeaway container, some sand, a straw in water. We'll need a set of test tubes. I have already put about 5 ml of water in these test tubes and added one drop of phenol failing indicator. We also need sodium carbonate and sodium hydrogen carbonate and a grit that will fit on top of the container. To start with, I just put a thin layer of sand in the container. Then the sodium carbonate is used for the high concentration of the resource. Uh, I'm quite generous with the amount of chemicals I use because the straw will only pick up small amounts. We'll see later what that's for. Uh, my main deposit is along these lines. Now I'm going to use sodium hydrogen carbonate for the smaller concentrations. Some of them go just around the main deposit. Again, I put a fair bit in there. You don't have to put it all the way around it. And you can make lines actually coming away from the main deposit. A bit more there. And just have a little outcrop there. I make each of them different so the students do not have the same. Okay, I cover this with a nice thick layer of sand. Because you don't want the students to see where the white powder is. Flatten it out, put it down, and there, it's ready to be surveyed. Start with, put the grid on there. Now this comes from the test tube rack, so 5 by 3 is the same as 5 by 3 in the rack here. We're going to use the wet straw and take the sample from each grid and put it in the test tube. You will see some of the test tubes will change colour. And just continue all the way through. Some will go dark pink, some will go nothing, some will go light pink. If you remember in the corner I put sodium hydrogen carbonate which is the low concentration, which is indicated by the light pink. And just work yourself through the grid. Nothing in the corner. Deposit, small deposit, still small deposit, still small deposit, and still a little bit. Okay, so the students end up with a map of where their resources lie, where there's nothing, like on this one. Lower concentration, higher concentration, even lower concentration, and nothing again. So they could actually colour it with three different shades of pink to draw a map. Okay, now, the reason I chose these two chemicals is I'm going to use some water. That's the same as this was already in those tubes. Indicator. Now if I add sodium carbonate to this, it will go dark pink. Sodium carbonate 
in water is very basic, has a pH of about 11 to 12, so very dark pink, which is comparable to some of these. And if I do the same with the sodium hydrogen carbonate, it should give me a light pink color. So that's the reason for choosing the different chemicals. So I've got a light pink color. So the sodium hydrogen carbonate only has about, about a pH of 8 to 9. They get the two different colors. The students can draw up a map. Now to get rid of these solutions, they're safe to pour down the sink, but you don't really want the sand down the sink. So I'll just use some coffee filter. Put that in a beaker. Shake it up and just pour them through. And you get the sand in the coffee filter. And the solutions can go down to sink when they're done. You probably want to rinse the test tubes with water. And pour them down again until they're clean.